Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome again, my friends, to the voice of the eternal gospel. I'm Pastor Rafael Perez, who invite you to pray with us. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the opportunity that you give us to study that word. Help us to uh, present the truth, to present the truth to all these uh, friends out there as it is in Jesus. Because it is on his name that we ask you all this. Amen. 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 My brother Patrick, in the last program, you were reading, well, we were talking about the, the issue. Uh, right. We were, dealing, we, yeah, we were dealing with the issue of the mark. We were dealing with the issue of the Catholic Church changing the day of rest based off of Daniel 7.25 and the billboard itself. Right. It, it was in context yes. on the billboard yes. that we have been Building we the, to talk building about our, building the, position. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the interview that was made to me that came out into, I think uh, I was reading, I don't know who asked. Yeah, it's right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, by God's glory, uh, the, the few hours when that came out, the same day by the afternoon, there were about a possible 80 million people would be able to came across that that. that Interview the second day of yeah, this. The, uh, the second day we had 92 million potential awesome. audience. audience. By so, this point. so I praise God for that. So, if I ask and you, and actually, can you read the release hits, uh, views, release views and hits? And on, the on the first, the first day, day, it was 940, but on the second day, the next day, mm -hmm. it was 2651. Praise the Lord. So, so. I will say, why do we suppose that the Lord has been opening doors for so many people to come across this message? Mm -hmm. Could that be that maybe it's because God wants many people to be aware of what is about to take place? Because you were reading, my, my brother, uh, Patrick Jones, yeah. you were reading the last program, uh -huh. a quotation from the Catholic Church. There's that system where there are so many God, good God's children in there uh, uh, that they claim that they have a mark that mark their authority. Yeah. What is that? Can you read it again and give the source? Okay. It says the Catholic Church claims that the change was her act and the act is a mark of her ecclesiastical authority and religious things. This is from H. E. Thomas, the Chancellor of Cardinal Gibbons. And, and then, quote, Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible and this transference of the Sabbath observance is proof of the fact. And this is from the Catholic record September 1, 1923. Notice, now Daniel, what did Daniel 7.25 say? He would, he would think to change times and laws. Times deal with prophetic times, but law deals with God's Ten Commandments in this yeah. case. Mm -hmm. So wait a minute. They claim that the transference of the seventh day Sabbath, right? Mm -hmm. To be to the first day of the week, right? Is that what you're talking about here? That's yeah. right. Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible. The transference of the Sabbath observance mm -hmm. is proof of that fact. In other words, they are admitting that they transferred the sanctity of the seventh day from sunset Friday, to sunset Saturday to Sunday, the seventh day. And they're saying that this is the proof Sunday, of that. Sunday, the first day. Sunday, the first day, which is they call it proof of that fact, uh, says here, right? Yes. Of their that, authority. Of their authority, right? To change God's immutable law. We change, God's law cannot be changed by man in reality. Well, it well, is well, divine. Well, wait, wait. Divine not, precepts spoken and wrote cannot be changed by man. Not only by man. Not, not even God can change it. That's right, because God says, I change not. So and if, that, God could, if God could change it, the proof is Christ would not have had to die on the cross if he could change God's law. That's right. Right, right. Could you but, read that next paragraph, yeah, Patrick? Go, yeah, right. It says Sunday is a what? Sunday is a Catholic institution. 
and its claims of observance can be defended only on Catholic principles. This okay. is a quotation. Their Sunday observance cannot be, in other words, in reality, they're telling you that anybody who wants to defend Sunday hmm. Not must from, follow Catholic principles to defend Sunday because they cannot defend Sunday strictly from the Bible itself. Amen. From beginning to end of scriptures, there is not a single passage that warrants the transfer of weekly public worship from the last day of the week to the first, unquote. The so the scriptures do not that's warrant... That's from the Catholic what? Press, Sydney, Australia, August 1990. The scriptures do not what? They, they don't support the change of worship from the seventh day to the first day. But you have all, you got, you got these minutes, you got different first day ministers who will sit there and, and swear up and down that the Sunday is, the Sabbath's been changed to Sunday. Right. From, and they try to use scripture to do it. Right. They try to quote the book of Acts where Paul said they yeah. met and, had, and they broke bread on, yeah. on the first day of the week. And Paul preached till midnight. Yeah, that type of thing. But in reality, there's only eight Bible texts that deal with Sunday throughout the whole New Testament. And at the same time, those texts do not warrant the change of the Sabbath. And that Saturday night preaching, I mean, it was on Saturday night on the first day of the week. Mm -hmm. It was meeting on the... It was, it was a continuance of their Sabbath worship. And to show you one, one more point, you remember now, Jesus resurrected early Sunday morning, early mm -hmm. Sabbath night, early going, end of Sabbath, going into Sunday. Mm -hmm. He rose before the sun rose. Mm -hmm. That's right. All right? Showing that Jesus had kept the Sabbath mm -hmm. as the memorial of creation, even in his death. Mm -hmm. And he had resurrected long before Sunday the sun rose so that Sunday could not necessarily be acquainted with his resurrection. Even though Satan has sought to make people believe that Jesus rose Sunday morning at sunrise, Jesus rose before the sun rose. Pastor Maurice? To show, yes. There's a uh, nice chart here in this newspaper. Let's take a look oh, at yeah? that. That's yeah. a good point. Okay. And it shows that on Friday, Christ was crucified, fulfilling the prophecy that he would be the Passover lamb. It says here on Passover okay, and Friday. That's, oh, that's, and by the way, Passover was on the 14th day at Abbot. Mm -hmm. uh, Abbot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then on the next day, it was a high Sabbath. Okay, that, that was a high Sabbath. It was a Sabbath, but it was a high Sabbath because it fell on the, on the, on the feast Sabbath. Am I right? Well, yeah. At that so time. Both the yes. weekly Sabbath and, right. and the ceremonial, ceremonial Sabbath, Sabbath right. fell on that day. And that was the 15th day of Abbot. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was on that was on of what? That was the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Yes. Uh -huh. And then in Leviticus 23, it says on the morrow after the Sabbath, Christ would be the first fruits presented as the first fruits. And okay. first fruits of those who are resurrection of, of those mm -hmm. who slept mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. on the morrow. It says in the Bible, Leviticus 23, 10 and 11, on the morrow after the Sabbath, Christ would be presented as the first fruits. All right, meaning and, he would have a resurrection. And so this was predicted. He was an exact fulfillment of prophecy. And that's how we know that Jesus was the Messiah. Amen. Mm. All right. the, so, okay, so going back again to what we are, we're presenting here is and, and why we need to remind ourselves and to all of you over there about this, it is because prophecy foretells that this is going to be an issue uh, uh, as it is right now in Europe, many parts of Europe, it's, it's been pushed in North America, like in the previous program, you were reading, you were mentioning on the uh, press release that came out, and, and you can read it too, if you uh, try to go to uh, online and get it, about how they're pushing that they want us to they want this country and the whole world to go back again on the days of the blue laws yeah because you know be, be, because the enemy is making us to believe making you to believe out there that God is outraged as upset because we are not uh, uh, having the people going to what they call the Lord's Day to church. No, mm -hmm. you can. It, it is something from the heart. Well, okay. As you, as you, as you, as it brought out in this paper on page, um, on page fourteen, it says here, Eternal Gospel Church. While this, while the Vatican teaches every seventh day, the Word of God teaches us to keep the Sabbath on the seventh day. Mm -hmm. The big difference: the Lord's Day is the seventh day Sabbath. 
as Jesus proved in Luke 4, 16 through 18. And, and I mentioned, I mentioned that even God cannot change it. Look, can I read just a small? If this ties right with what Pastor Maurice was saying, Jesus proved it because he went, to, it says in those verses in Luke, that he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath and then he read from Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And there's only the so he, the Jesus support. was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. On the Lord's Day, yeah. right. Okay. I was going to, I mentioned a few minutes ago uh, that when Pastor Barry was quoting Daniel 7.25, mm -hmm. that the, the uh, power that was coming out of Rome would think to change God's law. Yes. And you mentioned, no man can change it. I said, well, not even God. Mm -hmm. and, and, the says, For I am the Lord, I change yes. not. That's right. And in Numbers 23, 19, he says, what I have blessed, I cannot, you know, avoid it. I cannot make it void. I, right. I cannot break it. Now, let's see something. God doesn't change, right? God doesn't change. We'll go to Psalms 89, 34 for a moment. It says here, my covenant will I not break. That's first. That's another good one. Now he says, nor alter, meaning change, right, right. the thing that has gone out of my lips. Going out of his lips means what came out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. And in Exodus chapter 20, the Bible says, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out the land of Egypt, and out the house of bondage. Thou shalt never God see for me. Now God is speaking his law. Mm -hmm. So he will not change what he has Listen, he will not break his covenant, nor will he alter the covenant as it was spoken out of his lips. Let's make it right there. We'll be right back. Hi, friends. I'd like to introduce you to a special book that we have available. It's the story of Pastor Rafael Perez's journey from preparing to be a priest in the Roman Catholic Church and how God worked very providentially in his life to turn him from that decision to following Jesus in the light of present truth. If you've been blessed by the Eternal Gospels program, we want to invite you to receive our new book entitled From Babylon the Great to the Eternal Gospel. It is the personal testimony of our speaker and director, Rafael Perez. But more than this, if you want courage, if you want strength, this personal testimony of this 150-page book will give you insights into why God is calling men and women out of Babylon. And if you'd like to receive it today, just call the number at the bottom of your screen and ask for offer 777. That's offer 777. Why 7? Because the seventh day is the Sabbath. Why 7? Because the Sabbath was sanctified. Why 7? Because the final issues in this great controversy is between the Sabbath and Sunday. That is my journey. I hope and pray that you are going to order the book right now from Babylon the Great to the Eternal Gospel. May God bless you all. Jesus both predict that the Church of God becomes a force against God. The radical faith that Jesus taught had become the official religion of the empire that murdered him. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah, I'm now, sorry, I had to cut you off yeah, before the break. Remember, now God does not alter the thing that goes out of his lips. Mm -hmm. And he wrote the, He spoke the Ten Commandments. And when he spoke them, he said, I will not alter it. Mm -hmm. So God will not alter. He will not change. With him is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. 
So as we look at this issue, as we see what's going on, we see that God's law, his covenant, cannot be broken and it cannot be altered. So that's why to think the change, that's why we say he thinks to change times and laws because God does not change. Okay, briefly, I know we have covered that in previous program, but for the sake of the, all those new people coming in, joining this program, by God's grace, we con con constantly are getting new letters and new people saying, I discover. I I'm, mean, I'm, 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 I'm glad you're bringing it up yeah. because that makes us even more aware too that a lot of people will tell you uh, right off the bat, we're under the new covenant. That's right. That's we're right. under the new covenant. So what, the, what is the new covenant right quick? Because this new covenant is connected with this billboard. Uh -huh. And a lot of people don't realize. And some of the people who are saying they discovered, they're discovering the law because that's part of the, that's part of the Holy Spirit teaching them under the new covenant. Yeah, I, I think we've been getting people. We Isaiah don't have time. 58. Because our time is so limited over here. But we, we're getting people saying, for instance, a nice lady was uh, calling us and saying, you know, one afternoon I was so depressed. I was, I, I was having even uh, thoughts that, you know, my life was not even worth it to be living. And all of a sudden I was, you know, uh, 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 how you call, uh, going through different channels on the TV and boom, your program came in. By God's grace, this lady was saying that day when she heard the, the, the eminent, the eminent, Second, the coming of Christ and the signs of the times. She said, it was like a new life came to me. And then now she's, she's every week tuning in to the voice of the Eternal Gospel. Mm -hmm. And I praise the wow. Lord for that. So, and, and, may, and many other testimonies. Amen. Maybe Amen. one time we can take two or three programs to give just testimony of the people. But, so, so for, for the sake of those. But for this but, issue of the new covenant, Hebrews 8.10, what's it say? Okay. This okay, is the covenant. For this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them in their hearts, and I will be them a God, and they should be my people. Mm -hmm. And they should not teach every man his neighbor and his brother, saying, No, Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest, and I'll be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities, where I remember no more. Amen. So the new covenant says the law is written in the heart mm -hmm. by God. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Under the new covenant, repeat again. The law what is God. Is written in the heart by God. And mind. But, but what is being and said mind. in taught today, in teach today, is that because we are under the new covenant, we don't have to obey the, the, the Ten Commandments. That's an what? oxymoron. That's a what? Oxymoron. Oxymoron. That's it. That means it's two opposite things trying to yeah. get, that don't go together. Why? Right to the opposite. But now remember. For, for, for those who have been flipping maybe today that channel, so to speak, and came up to this. And they might be thinking mm -hmm. about Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. Mm -hmm. can, can, can we help Colossians 2, 16 next? tells yeah. us this. That no man therefore judge you and meet, eat, drink, and in respect of holy of, a, of, a, of an holy day mm -hmm. or of a new moon or the Sabbath days. Now, yeah. I want to make it very plain here that when it says Sabbath days, it is not talking about the seventh day weekly Sabbath. It is some of the Sabbath days that were special, high Sabbath days that were connected with feast days a lot of times, okay? So, so but you, the seventh day Sabbath, remember, now it's also connected with the new moons issue too. New moons showing that these different feet, hot holy days or even high Sabbaths could fall on different days. It didn't have to just fall on the seventh day, yes. all right? So there was a difference. The seventh day Sabbath was still intact, weekly cycle. But the new Sabbath days, new moons, they could come on Wednesday. They come on a Thursday. They can come any. They can come any Sunday time, uh, on a Sunday, and sometimes they can even come on a Sabbath. When they came on the seventh day Sabbath, that was called a high Sabbath. Right. Where, where can we find that briefly, so we can we don't yeah. have to read it, but Brother yeah. Patrick, where, where, where can we tell the brethren to or the friends out there to find those seven days, those oh. ceremonial Sabbath, Levitical chapter twenty three three? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I just want them to know that. But that's but your Old Testament. So how's how's that fitting when you when you're coming from the New Testament? Because some people take the New Testament and say that this is this is going on. This is for us now because of the New Covenant. This is part of the New Testament and the New Covenant. Amen. How would you explain? How would you? Well, they were. Make that uh, it says right here. I think um, they were shadows of good things to come. They were shadows when the real thing comes. Jesus, the Lamb of God, the real Lamb of God, 
Then those the, those were nailed to the cross. Those, so, so, so why was it nailed to the cross? Because he was fulfilling them right there. He was the Passover lamb, the real Passover lamb. So that's why we don't keep the Passover today. Right. The Passover Sabbath. The Passover day. Sabbath. Okay. okay. Uh, we and he sub he substituted the communion service for the Passover. Okay. Now, 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 now. This, this is to be clear. There are there are areas where you can, where people can. We are told people can go back and study about what happened at Passover and different things like that. But they are not necessarily. Are they under obligation to keep it though? That's the catch. Right. No. Of no. But they can go back and. Learn a lot of learn lessons. Learn a lot of lessons. And, and spiritual lessons. And, and spiritual yeah. lessons. Oh, spiritual lessons. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Just, I'm just asking because yeah. when we go back and study the Millerite history mm -hmm. of uh, some, some, uh, some place like that, early Advent history, mm -hmm. you would find that the, all those days met fulfillment because they were all based on time. Right. The spring of the year and the fall of the year. Mm -hmm. So go back. Okay. What you're doing now. So coming back again to our topic. So, uh, Mm -hmm. For those that hear that just because we are under the new covenant, we are not, um, uh, should be abiding to the holy, eternal Ten Commandments, that it's not biblical. Or that Jesus did away with the law. Or that's the other, mm -hmm. the other argument. Oh, Jesus got away. Well, what, what Matthew chapter 5 says? Matthew. Verse 17. Hang on, yeah. Okay. okay. I mean, yeah, I want to leave very clear because the closer we get to the end of this timing that we're living, the more we're going to be uh, hearing deceptions, confusions, in the midst of pandemics, uh, riots, <laughs> uh, uh, calamities. We are going to hear more and more religious people coming out openly like in program like this, and they will take many into the subject. So what did Jesus say? Matthew 5, 17, Jesus said, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Wow. No. Uh, uh, no, keep reading, please. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Yes. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom Amen. of heaven. Amen. Praise yes. the Lord. I mean, so clearly, Jesus was talking in there, even children can understand it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I'm amazed to, yeah. Yeah. to and when. When it says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He has a new heart for the Holy Spirit to write God's law in our hearts right. and minds. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Then Christ will uh, be living in us, fulfilling the law. Amen. Just like he was as our example when he lived on this, on this earth. So, men in the carnal mind, with the carnal mind, isn't that what Paul what Paul says, cannot keep the law. Right. Yes. Right. But when we come... Romans 8, verse 7. I, I have to read that. Verse 7 says, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So, so you don't want to not keep the Sabbath. That's proving you're, you have a carnal mind. It doesn't matter if you're a preacher or a popular church that's teaching that. Right. right. But the mind of the Spirit, it says, is life and peace. Verse Praise 6. Praise the Lord. And, and like Pastor Barry brought it up, then when we experience the new, the, the new covenant, the new birth on us, then the Holy Spirit coming right in our, in our heart. Amen. Right. Commandments. This is right here in 2 Corinthians 3 3. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistles of Christ, mm -hmm. ministered by us, written not with ink, mm -hmm. but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in the fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust have ye, have we, through Christ, to God's word. Can I go back to a previous verse in the Old Testament that shows, it says, a new heart will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, 
and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Amen. Yes. And then with those new hearts were epistles of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit's writing a letter on the fleshy tables of our heart, and the new covenant in Hebrews 8 and 10, where the Holy Spirit is writing God's law on our in our foreheads and in our hearts, so that uh, He will, so that Christ can uh, make us obedient, and He will not remember our sins anymore. Praise the Lord! Isn't that a good news? Yes. Isn't I mean, in the means we need to bring good news to our people because all we hear is about you know killing, violence, you know uh, riots, calamities. Amen. We need to bring to the people that there is hope only. Our hope, not put our eyes on men, please. We put, need to respect men, own fellow men, respect them. Put it okay. on Jesus, the word. But spiritually speaking, put our eyes on Jesus. I, 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 I would like to keep bringing this. I'm excited with this publication. I want you to know the newest publication called the Eternal Gospel. Uh, uh, God's love for men. That name right there, the yeah. eternal gospel or Revelation 14, it says uh -huh. everlasting gospel uh -huh. too. That shows that the gospel doesn't change. Amen. The Old Testament gospel is the same as the New Testament gospel. <laughs> I like sin that. is sin in the Old Testament is the same as sin in the New Testament. The solution, the lamb, is the same as in, in the old as in the new. Jesus, the lamb of God, that taketh away the sin of the world. Again, isn't that a good news? Amen. Yes. And, and then if all of us as citizens, as children of God, will enter into that experience of the new covenant, again, I uh, praise the Lord, Pastor Berlia, you brought that up, because people has, are being, Satan has been so astute, they're making, he's making believe many good people, that because we are under the new covenant, so to speak, then we don't have to worry about mm. uh, uh, paying attention to the Ten Commandments. Unfortunately, our time is up. I need to close the program just to remind you that, yes, my dear friends, Jesus is coming soon. And in the midst of all this uh, uh, pandemic and riots and, and violence, we can find peace with God and our fellow men only if we enter into the new covenant. May God bless you all. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel, P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.